All right, now that we've got this uh, mocked up, uh, what we'd like to do is go ahead and run this table all the way to one side to its limit so that we can make sure that our reader head doesn't end up bottoming out on the scale before the slide does. Now like I said this is an unaltered uh, slide. I have forecast that I get about 27 and a half inches of table travel on this. Now I'm just about at the end and I've still got a full three or four inches of travel before the reader head hits the end of the slide so I'm fairly comfortable with that shouldn't be an issue always better to be a little bit longer than a little bit shorter so we'll go ahead and we'll come back and Gus my pooch we'll come back and run this all the way to the other side See how we look on this uh, this side of the table. Boy, this is where I really wish I had a an electric power feed here. I've got a mechanical drive here; it's not plugged in. But a rapid traverse would be really nice in this situation. But we're almost there anyway. All right, as we come up to the end here, this old mechanical drive is actually probably going to just about bottom out right there and we've still got three or four inches on the uh, before the reader head hits the end of the scale so uh, that's looking pretty good to me I don't think that we're in jeopardy of ever having the reader head hit the back of the scale even if we do take the power feed off at some point and uh, and alter that so uh, I'll get set up to uh, start drilling and tapping, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Stay tuned. All right, back on the table, uh, we've got, uh, what I went ahead and did was take my uh, uh, combination square here, and uh, basically I just want to really make sure that we're pretty close um, with having this thing uh, level right from the start off of the table and it's uh, amazing I got pretty lucky uh, stuck it on there and uh, got pretty much pretty much dead on uh, pretty happy about that and what we'll do now is just go ahead and take the transfer punch kind of find the center of the slot give it a wrap There is a little bit of adjustability in all of this, so close is good enough. Take our reed head off and take the scale off. and inspect our punch. That one looks good. That one looks good. Wow, this double-sided tape is... Uh... Wow, that's really on there. I'm gonna have to get a, uh, a razor blade and uh, cut that off. Be right back. All right. <clears throat> Just gonna get this tape off. This stuff, boy, they were not kidding when they talk about sticking. There's uh, quite a bit of adhesive left over on this. And uh, need a sharp razor blade to get that off. There, there we go. All right, now that that's done, I'd like to go ahead and Repunch these, give myself just a little bit better of a start for the drill. Like I was saying, give myself a little bit of a nice.
punch in there. And uh, now we'll go ahead and tap drill the holes. The screws really aren't all that long. I'm going to guess, if I had to, probably about uh, oh, three eighths of an inch or so. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and check that out right now. I'd say probably a good half an inch uh, to five eighths deep will probably do it as far as the, uh, the tap drill goes. We'll go down with a regular plug tap and follow that up with a bottoming tap. And uh, see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and use a machinist square here to get me. Just about do now is put that in there, get a feel for the screw. That's just about all the way in there. I think I may just go a little bit deeper. Even though when we tap it we'll be blowing the chips out, I want to make sure that I've got enough clearance in there. The last thing you want is to be breaking a tap. Nobody wants that. All right. That should be, I think, plenty. That gives me about a quarter of an inch uh, from the bottom of the quarter of an inch uh, off the bottom of the screw. And since you've already seen me drill one. I'll drill the second one off camera. I'll be back in a moment. All right, we're back. Got both tap drills drilled. And uh, what I'm going to do now is double check to make sure that I've got the right tap. Four millimeter by 0.7. And I'll apply a little bit of cutting fluid to it and start to tap the hole the uh, cast iron is uh, seemingly very easy to tap it seems to be just following the hole. All the way down. I'm going to take it out and whoops. Blow it off. see me. 
but I am wearing safety glasses, which is of course always important when you're using compressed air with chips. I'm going to give my tap a little, little air. We'll run it back in to make sure that we've gone all the way to the bottom of the hole. Then we'll chase the thread with a bottoming tap. Just to make sure that we've got the most amount of usable thread. I've left a fair amount towards the bottom of the hole, so I don't think that having enough thread is really going to be an issue since I'm darn near almost to the bottom of the of the tap itself. So I think we may just call that uh, call that a day. We've bottomed out on the tap so there's really no point in going down there with a gun with a uh, bottoming tap since it looks like I've got good thread all the way all the way around just to truth here. Alright. And that goes all the way to the almost to the shoulder of the or the head of the uh, socket head cap screw. <coughs> or hex head cap screw I should say. And since you've just seen me do one, I'll do the other one off camera. Be right back. 